Welcome to another video framed at newcomers and those among you that never have gotten into the relic hunting business yet. Maybe you have also wondered, are these weapons even relevant or is the whole time investment their farming process naturally requires worth it? Let us talk about this and try to find the right answer for you, especially when looking at relic weapons that will be introduced in Endwalker and if these are worth spending your time with. Let us start with a little bit of historical background as the first relic weapons had been introduced in a Realm Reborn already which featured many tasks of doing overworld content, fates, dungeons, raids and many many more. Here the foundation had been constructed and Square created content like this for each expansion which differed immensely sometimes but more to that later. The cool thing though, compared to other games, you can still do these quests and with the help of your very powerful level 90 character and decent item level, this first relic weapon can be soloed entirely, which can be said about the Heavensward Anima Relic as well, that still offers some of the coolest weapons in this game, at least for certain jobs. And yes, now you might think, old relic weapons can't be useful for dealing with recent endgame content, right? Yes, that is where the true purpose comes in handy, Glamour, aka the true endgame. You might believe it or not, if Square doesn't step away from the usual formula, recent relic weapons and even armor pieces will not be useful either as whenever they got released, they are falling back behind the best in slot gear, as savage raid weapons and armor pieces outmatch them in general. However, there is one exception, which usually is the last step of the relic weapon, as this is being released when the final raid tier had been out for quite a while, and I believe if these weapons would not offer a small benefit at least, the motivation for grinding them down would be very minimal. On the other hand, these weapons can be a very good way to catch up as a non-raiding person, because the tasks at hand can be considered much easier than to handle savage raid content, and as some non-raiders are bound to tombstone gear, relic weapons and even armor pieces that have been added in the previous two expansions already might become insanely handy to increase your item level by a good amount. Yet all you should be ultimately worried about is how these weapons and armor sets look, because most of the times they offer at least on par style with ultimate weapons, which are the number one eye catcher in Final Fantasy XIV. So stat wise, all the relic weapons you can see in my showcase videos, Zodiac, Anima, Stormblood and now even Shadowbringers are useless by the time of this video, when it comes to stat distributions in recent content. However, when Endwalker relic weapons are going to be released, they kinda share the same fate compared to the best in slot weapons and armor sets found in the most recent Savage Raid. Just for the last tier of relics, these will become the best in slot weapons and if you take parsing very seriously, it might be worth getting them. Still the best value might be found in those trying to catch up and not having tackled Savage Raid content yet, or who never plan to do that at all, but still want decent weapons for extreme trials or duty finder content. But like I said, Glamour is the big deal here, where basically all relic weapons, the previous expansion ones included, have the same value, depending on the player and which job they play and if they like the connected relic for certain expansions. Like I covered in a video last year, the easiest weapon to get is the Anima Relic, featured in the Heavensward Relic content. As tested a couple of weeks ago, you can get this weapon in about 3-4 to four hours, when planning in some keen expenditure of your Alagan Tombstones of Poetics where the former A Realm Reborn Relic takes much more active playtime for about 12 to 24 hours. But remember that these weapons have different stages and you might already like one of the earlier stages where finishing the whole grind is not required at all. So check out my Witch Relic Weapon to Get video again if you want to know more about that. Unlike Zodiac and Heaven's Ward, the Relic Weapon content from Stormblood and Shadowbringers took a totally different route, basically by creating a strictly new form of content with Eureka and Bozja or Zednor that required the player to take part in custom battlefield areas where certain bonus effects and mechanics had been layered on top of the usual battle system you follow on with each job, with a much higher emphasis on group participation. And here comes my advice. As we learned from Stormblood and Shadowbringers, while there are active communities, especially by Discord servers organizing parties to clear that content, this time-gated and framed content tends to see a decline of active players participating the older this content gets, so if they continue with this group-oriented idea of getting a relic weapons, I would highly recommend to keep your personal progress on these relic weapons up to date with the offered content and enjoy it as long as it's hot. I'm really excited to see what they have in store for us this time around and I would love to see a combination of the two systems some sort of. Maybe a medley of all the horrible steps they offered in the past. And if we're good children of Hydaelyn, maybe she will grant us all the enjoyable steps. But we will see what the future holds and like always, I will keep you updated about the announcements or new info about upcoming relic content. 
Until then, and if you want to start with those weapons already in game, check out the many showcase videos or guides about Rally content found in the description. Have fun with the true endgame and keep loving Final Fantasy.